All right, guys, so let's jump in and take a look at Emulsion 3 in practice. Let's look at how and why we can get so much richer, better wet plate cyanotype platinum style toning using the layers and the power that we can get in Photoshop with Emulsion 3 over just doing simple toning and tinting with split tones and things like that. And let's study how to use Emulsion 3. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, and I think you guys are going to love how quickly and easily you can get those rich, amazing tones every time. On the raw file, it's really easy to get great looking black and white. We can convert it, we can use those channels, and then we can even go down and we can use split toning tools or presets like we have here in silver, and we can add a bit of tone and tinting to it. And you know what, it looks pretty good. The problem with tinting this way is it's difficult to get the intricacy and depth that harkens back to what we got with natural chemical blends in the dark room. And that is where emulsion comes in. So let's actually jump out of Lightroom. Let's switch over into Photoshop and let's look at emulsion three. Now you can see here I have uh, Emulsion 3, and if you go in, there's actually two sets. In Emulsion 3, there's the normal action, and I'm gonna load those up, and then you also see these Emulsion Textures, which is a pattern set for Photoshop that you also load up. And you can just double click these and load them right into Photoshop, and if we go over here to our Actions panel, and if you don't see it, you'll find it in the Window menu here. So you see you can turn on Actions, you can turn on patterns, but you don't really have to turn on patterns. Really all you need is the actions panel. Let's click here at the top, switch it to button mode, and now we're ready to go. Now you'll see the patterns that I installed. Here's these patterns, the Emulsion Textures 3 that are in here that are basically support files for the actions. You can use these manually and you can apply them in blending options and in other areas where you would do pattern fills, but you don't really have to worry about it. You open them up, you install them, and now we're ready to use Signature Emulsion 3. You'll see there's a couple help buttons if you get lost and aren't sure what to do, but I'm gonna show you right now so we don't really need to click the help buttons. The bottom line is that you can start from a color or you can start from a black and white. There also is a silver converter action in here that's pretty powerful because you can do a quick black and white conversion and then you can adjust the curves and the channels of the black and white by just clicking on these adjustment layers. So I could make a custom black and white here, I could change the curves, etc. Or you might be bringing in a black and white that you already converted in Lightroom or in Capture One or something like that. In this case though, we're gonna start with a color image because all of the Emulsion 3 effects will actually uh, take the color out of your image as it builds the action and you'll see that right here. Let's run Platinum Emulsion 3, which is kind of the original foundation that Emulsion was built on. So you can see it running this action here, it, doesn't take long, but it's building a lot of layers. And here's the beauty and the control of Emulsion 3. Boom, just like that, we have this beautiful platinum look. Now you can see that you can go down here and you can have all of the layers. So the beauty of this is it's vertical editing. It's just gonna build this whole group of layers right here to give you your platinum effect. But as we go through the next couple images here, you're gonna see the power we have because you can go through and adjust any of these layers. So for example, you can adjust the detail on platinum. And depending on the effect, each one of these actions has different nuances. And you can see if we go in close here how you can affect the micro detail, the sharpness uh, with this layer, the paper softness which again is kind of a glow uh, in, in old prints, depending on how they were being printed, you would get a different level of detail and glow and micro contrast, and you can have some control over that here, depending on the look you're going for. Uh, you can see here that here's the color on off. You can actually get an interesting effect by leaving the color on while overlaying the platinum effect. Uh, and while it's not the key point that we're usually going for in a classic emulsion look, it can be fun to have. Here's where the magic really starts to happen is at this red layer and you can see that we've color-coded these red layers. I want to emphasize 
that you can just run this action and use it out of the box. You can take some of the quick layers, like the filmic curve, the gold emulsion to give it more of a gold tone. Remember, if you've studied film and if you've studied real classic darkroom printing methods, the tints and the tones and the hues, they didn't always come out the same because it depended on how the maker mixed the chemicals. It depended on the process, the approach that they were using. So there's some quick options up here where you can cool, you can warm, and you can kind of change the theme um, of your specific platinum with these yellow color coded ones. Down here we have the main tones and these are where all the tones are overlaid. You'll notice that all of the tones now in Emulsion 3, they're all built, they have these little squares next to them and that means there's actually blending modes happening. If you click into these, and you right click and go to blending options, you'll see these open up and you'll see down here, there's actually luminosity masking happen. Now we could do a whole video on how these masking and feathering down here works to reveal only parts of these color overlays in the underlying layer. And you can certainly tinker with any of those. The bottom line, however, is that all of the toning actions, rather than a, just a split tone like we would get on a raw file where you have this color on the highlights and this color on the shadows, these are complex mixes that are affecting shadows, highlights, mid-tones, all these things differently using luminosity masking. The power of that and one of the really great new features of having this in Emulsion 3 is that now we can use this smart curve. So anything I add below main tone, our orange group right here, is going to change the image and as a result, main tone is fluid, which means that the tints are gonna change dynamically. And the main way to do that is simply with a curve. If you shoot black and white, you know that one of the most important things is separation of tone, because we're taking away color in a monochrome image. And so when you have a black and white, you're separating that tone and as such, you need shadows, you need lights to really draw those lines and really bring out the image. That's why light matters so much in a black and white image. You'll see this red layer here, and this is a go-to layer along with these other ones up here. You don't have to touch any of these layers, but if you want to adjust this, watch what's happening. I can change the curve and you can see the image refreshing. So I might darken my shadows or I might lighten my shadows a little bit, but I might darken the shadows and then lift the blacks a little bit to give more of a filmic type look. I might lift my highlights in the middle and then drop it down. Again, these are, these are fundamental curve tools, but what's happening is I'm completely changing the feel of the image because as I do this, as I change this and add this curve, it's not only adding the curve to control the tones, it's actually going beyond that and changing the main tones in the image in real time because those are masking based on the tones that they see underneath. It's really pretty amazing. Let's look at another image though because it really is this simple. We'll look at a couple different kinds. That was a platinum. Let's look at another platinum real quick with this image. You can see this image has already been processed. It looks really cool, but we're gonna take advantage of the fact. We're not gonna convert it to black and white or anything. We're just gonna run platinum and take advantage of the tone and the separation and boom, just like that. We're gonna experiment. Let's do a little bit of a filmic lift option. You can see in these other options group, Again, every time you run Platinum, you're gonna see all of these, and you can just turn on options uh, to get a different look. Let's turn on the bronzing to make this a little more intense. And again, let's go to that red layer to our Smart Curve Adjust and just bring out the contrast in a way that we really like. And I think that's good. It honestly just took us a few seconds, and now we have this rich, beautiful, platinum effect. Now you'll notice pluses and minus on a lot of layers. Uh, if you want to be more subtle, you can adjust the opacity of the entire main group, okay, of the toning group. And that's why we've grouped everything in like this. However, you can also turn off or on and or adjust opacity on individual layers. And if you really want to get crazy, you can even start playing with the different blending modes of each layer to get different looks on different images. So there's a lot of ways that you can manipulate. You'll also see there's uh, there's masks on a lot of these. So you could mask out uh, areas of the image, of the toning, you could add masks. The possibilities really are endless. And that's the beauty of Emulsion 3 is that as we go in here, we just have these huge number of controls 
that we can take to make it our own. Let's actually look at this one. Now, this one's already been converted to black and white with silver in Lightroom. So we're starting with a black and white image in this case. And let's actually run the wet plate emulsion. Now, sometimes it's better to start with a color image because you have all these layers and controls and it's gonna allow the details to be interpreted differently by the action. But you can choose, depending on the image, how you wanna do it. You'll see that with that wet plate look, again, we have all of these tones, controls, and we still have what, ha what all the looks have in common is that smart curve layer because all of our toning tools, each action might come with varying degrees of complexity in the way it tints and tones and you can control opacity and all that, but they're all three-dimensional in the sense that they're real-time, they luminosity mask, and they're gonna change depth based on shadows and highlights depending on what's happening underneath. So again, if I double click this adjustment layer, go up here and change this adjustment layer, I'm going to be able to change what happens to this image. Let's bring down the shadows, but lift up the blacks just a little bit and pull down those highlights just a little bit. Okay. So sometimes you might not do anything and sometimes you might radically adjust that curve to get it the way you want. You'll see there's a lot of layer controls in the wet plate look as well because in the wet plate we're trying to kind of bring out that classic look we're trying to bring out the the fading the the fact that in wet plate you often have this really strong detail so you can see this kind of hyper detail in here and we can control that with the crispy detail layer where we can decide how intense we want that detail to be uh, the lighting layer again a lot of control in one layer where you can just turn it up or down to change the lighting effects of the image. The wet channels, again, we're kind of hearkening back to that liquid process, that wet plate approach. And sometimes you get a really matted highlight look with that, depending on how they were processed and you have exact control over that. So rather than have to build up on these, you run the action, you use it, and then you tweak it as needed to get the look you want. And it's a very, very powerful thing. Now we can also then go and we're seeing these effects, but now we can actually go down to the emulsion textures. Let's talk about those real quick. Let's say I want like a water glass texture. And so I'm just going to click that. And remember we loaded those patterns when we installed emulsion three, it's just going to automatically overlay that. And then I can control opacity. I can go to the texture and I can change blending modes. I can change it to overlay or soft light or hard light, depending on how I want that texture to come out. And so I have all this control. I can use the texture to fade. I can turn it up and down. I can have kind of those water spots. Let's just delete this one and apply the water process paper, which is like a, an actual scan of a water stained paper. So let's get rid of this one. And again, let's just run the water process paper. And again, we'll see that texture. You can see kind of that water spotting going on and we can turn it down. We can make it subtle. You'll see that when the action builds, uh, there's different layers in the group of the texture. So you could, for example, turn off the saturation of the texture and now you would get the color from that paper overlaying and you could use that as an additional level of tinting. The way we set up the textures and the papers by default is to quickly put them in a group in a way that's gonna be useful and versatile. And again, just like the main effect, you can tweak with it to your heart's content. Now, the reason we've kept this separate is because some of you may be taking and making art prints. You may be printing these on a fiber paper that has its own texture, or maybe, maybe you just think textures are cheesy and you don't wanna use them, and that's fine. The beauty of Emulsion 3 is that whatever you're making, you can get your look. Let's take this image of Yosemite here and go back to a platinum. So let's run the platinum effect on this, let it do its default, and you can see it just builds all of the layers up. Always uh, try to be aware of those layers. Even if you just run the action and you say, hey, it looks great, don't be afraid of these layers. I know there's a lot of them. You can expand, you can collapse the groups, uh, you can go again to that smart curve adjust layer. And what that means is as you adjust that curve, the tones are gonna intelligently shift. And look at the intricacy. See in this rock up here, what's happening. Watch what happens to the tones in those highlights as we shift the control. And so we're getting a very filmic kind of darkroom 
inspired feel here that goes back to what we would get in in the real dark room with real platinums and and real chemicals as much as we can in that you would get a different feel a different look depending on how you mixed on how you expose and all these variables and i absolutely recommend everyone no matter what they photograph spend some time in the dark room at some point because it will really help you to understand these processes more that we take over and kind of duplicate and mimic in lightroom in photoshop uh, let's look at maybe a gold kind of a gold tone i think would look good on this one but i'm going to turn the opacity down on it just a little bit and again then i'm going to lift up i want a little bit more brightness in here this would look great printed on just a fiber rag type paper or something like that now of course you could go in and you can burn and dodge uh you could do that before you ran the effect or you could add layers down below any layers you add below the main tone the orange group and then change the tone the values of the image below those those tones are going to automatically update Let's come back to this image here, and it's just uh, fairly straight, a little bit of a harsh image the way it is right now, but let's actually run our wet plate on this and just really bring out those tones. We got good highlight and shadow separation, and this is gonna look great on the wet plate. Just gonna let that run, and there we go. Now we can come back in here, and let's think about how much we wanna blur those edges and get kind of that faded, vignetted wet plate look. Let's think about how much detail we want. Let's not turn the crispy detail up too much. Again, you can see I'm just clicking layers and adjusting opacity right up here. And let's play with the lighting layer a little bit. The lighting layer is very powerful on this. So I'm gonna turn the lighting layer up, but then come to the wet channels layer, this orange one here. And you'll see that I'm just going to put, turn up the wet channels a little bit to flatten those highlight curves just a little bit and then i'm going to do the whetstone surface texture overlay which is a bit much here i'm going to dial it back just so we have a little bit of under texture and that feel of a uh, vintage plate looking really good okay let's actually run the cyanotype we've done wet plate we've done platinum cyanotype is a very bold really cool old school effect one of the earliest photographic processes and for for some people and for some things it's it's too much it might not work for every image but sometimes you might just really want to bring out that rich blue you'll see there's a lot of layers so as this runs you have this blue overtone we have the same smart curve adjust layer that we do in the other actions so as you change that you can change how those cyanotype tones are being applied to shadows versus highlights really bring down shadows if you want to separate them you can see as I bring down these shadows the deep blues are being applied by the intelligent three-dimensional tonal mixes above them so depending on how we curve and mix this we're gonna get a different look and we can bring up those shadows a little bit kind of reminiscent of an old-school cyanotype print and we can also play in this case with the master tone if we want more of a blue overlay that's more intense or if we want less of a blue overlay let's go kind of in the mid-range here and there we go again i'm gonna apply the whetstone surface to this one if i was going to print on paper a lot of times i would be very soft with a texture or maybe not even use it at all let's delete this one and let's do uh, the water process paper i think that's going to work a little bit better here and just bring some of that paper texture this can be really good just to bring in a little bit of texture and detail and bear in mind you'll notice these texture images all have masks so if i click on the mask and paint black on that mask you can see that i'm actually painting away right there's my mask white reveals black conceals and so i could for example just have it around the edges and run my texture around there okay so there's different ways you can do it and i would probably go really subtle on a texture if i was doing something like going to print going to a fiber print i might not even apply a texture because my my actual real world print is going to have texture of its own so you can decide exactly how you want to mix and blend and take that but you can see the power there of our cyanotype as well
Let's come back and let's wrap up with another platinum image. Uh, this is actually a mobile image out of a phone and it's kind of neat light, not the super quality. If you go into the details, it's not perfect, but let's watch what happens when we run platinum on this and just uh, what it gives us. And that's the beauty of, of black and white, of toning, of kind of these vintage emulsives that we're doing with, with Emulsion 3 is you can just get these really beautiful vintage type results that are also very natural and just really organic. So I can come in here. I'm actually going to go to my smart curve real quick and just adjust that so I can separate the highlight platinum tones from the midtones and shadows a little bit better lifting up those shadows just a little bit and boom just like that here to here okay guys so that is just a few of the things we can do let me come back to this one that we did i really like that one let's put the 19th century paper on here this is a very subtle texture uh, it kind of gives a nice glow to it and you may not see a ton of texture but this actually is a real scan of uh paper from the 1800s to really give kind of that natural feel and of course if you want to change how it comes across you can always come and change your blending modes to give uh, different texture surfaces different light shadows you can see if i go to linear light we're seeing a lot more of the paper and at that point, we might want to turn the opacity way down, or we could use something like soft light where it's going to blend in a little bit more and again, controlling that opacity. And in this case, it's a really subtle texture. Uh, it's not about being over the top. It's just about bringing a nice richness into it. So, okay, that is a look at Emulsion 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it it's really powerful just don't be afraid to go in play with those layers and really just work with the look to your heart's content or do it in batches do it out of out of camera straight to emulsion and run a batch of them and just take what it gives you you could even automate it using the automation tools in photoshop there's just a really lot of controls that you have to give you these looks and you can do them however you want. And that's the beauty of Emulsion 3. It's all about giving you the control to get that rich, beautiful, classic look. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe our videos on YouTube if you wanna see more like this. And of course you can head over to simefx.com to check out other products, to pick up your copy of Emulsion 3. And if you have any questions, just shoot us an email, drop us a message. We're here to help. Enjoy, let us know what you think and send us your results. All right, peace.